And I'm just going to go through a bunch of verses. You don't have to follow along. But Galatians 5.19 says, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness. There is a difference between adultery and fornication. Okay, Adultery is when you do something, uh, you know, with someone out that you are not married to when you're married. Fornication is just anything outside of marriage. And we need a real, and it is, it's the work of the flesh. What does that mean? Well, it's, it's going to come natural to the flesh. There are some things that our flesh desires that are wrong, that are sinful. We have a fallen nature. And the mentality of our society today is if you, you know, have an inclination for that or an orientation towards that, there can't be anything wrong with it, but that's wrong. It is. It is wrong. We all, you know, we're all inclined to lose our temper. We're inclined to be selfish. We are orientated towards, you know, being self-centered and things like that. But does that mean, you know, we have, should have a right to do those things, have a right to, you know, it being all about me. Do I have a right if I, you know, if I, maybe, you know, maybe I'm a kleptomaniac, you know, maybe I just see things. I have a sickness. I have to steal. So, you know, how dare they have laws telling me I can't do something that I was born to do. You know, I want to steal. And we've got these people, they use those same arguments about homosexuality and trying to say that it's right and it's legal because that's what they are inclined to do. That's absolutely, completely bogus. I expect that kind of thing from a messed up, perverted world. But when Christians start buying into that, we've got a huge problem. But listen, fornication is a work of the flesh. So you know what? Yes, you're going to, you might desire to do these things. You know, your children, as they grow up, they're going to be tempted to do these things, but it's not okay. It is absolutely not okay. And it is wicked and it has devastating consequences. First Corinthians 10, eight says, neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day, three and 20,000. This is in the new Testament. He's saying, let's not commit fornication. In one day, there were 23,000 people that God killed because of the sin of fornication. This is a big deal. And people do, oh, well, we're in New Testament now. It's all about grace. 1 Corinthians 10 is New Testament. And listen, this doesn't mean God's going to kill 23,000 people if somebody commits fornication. But you know what those stories in the Old Testament teach us? This is how God feels about fornication. He killed 23,000 people because of it. And just because he's not doing it today doesn't mean it doesn't make him mad. And God will be angry with you if you do that. And God will be angry at our church if that kind of thing is going on in our church. And so let's not do that. God killed 23,000 people one time. Listen, we know people lie in church. But do we see people dropping dead like Ananias and Sapphira? No. Does that mean God doesn't care anymore? No, God put that story in the Bible showing us, hey, this is how God feels about lying. And so we should, just because we're not dropping dead, you know, people aren't dropping dead when they lie, doesn't mean we shouldn't be lying. No, we should learn from that story and say, this is how God feels about lying. So you know what? We're not going to do it. And we need to learn from the 23,000 people killed because of fornication. Say, God obviously has a huge problem with that. Hebrews 12, 11. It says, now no chastening for this present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous nevertheless afterward it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble needs and make straight paths for your feet, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, but let it be rather be healed. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord looking diligently, diligently, lest any man fail the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled, lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. For ye know how that afterward that he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. Y'all see what's going on here. He, in Hebrews, this warning us, listen, don't let there be any fornicator among you. Because remember how Esau, he sold his birthright and later he was sorry he did it. Later, he looked for repentance. He wanted to get that birthright back. I mean, he sought it. He's crying. He's that sorry for what he had done. But you know what? He was rejected. It was too late. There are some things you just don't come back from. And fornication is one of those things. When we need to understand that we have a forgiving God, but there are some things 
that you're just you're crossing a line and you you just can't go there. And you think, well, you know, I'll just you know, we've all heard the saying, you know, I'd rather ask for forgiveness than for permission. Well, you might be able to do that with some things. But there are some things you're not going to be able to do that with, and fornication is one of those things. And you need to understand that the consequences of fornication, they can be lifelong. And listen, God can forgive you and you can still get saved and you can still go to heaven, but you are going to deal with the consequences here on this earth for the rest of your life. And so don't do it. Stay away from it. Keep away from it.